will ish your life away. You will cast your cares on the toilet. I do know that, that I do know. And if you're up for that, like it works. Don't get it twisted, it works. Stomach flat, flat, flat. But the way I had to cast my cares in that bathroom, I really wasn't feeling that. So, oh, I need to pay my tithes and I got to follow the pastor or God is not going to hear from me. And it's like, if that's what you think that I'm doing over here, you definitely need to watch somebody else because that is not it. Thought it was a rotisserie chicken, didn't you? Waking well, you know, up early you never gets old. You always get more stuff done if you wake up early. Now, of course, I start off the morning by checking emails and responding to social media posts and such, but I also take some time in the morning to have quiet time. I usually do this with Kennedy before she leaves in the morning. As you can see, her iPad is her quiet time, and today I'm choosing to read a book for my quiet time, but quiet time can consist of anything from planning out my day to, like I said, answering emails or anything like that. It's just basically just taking some time to do something that I want to do that I need to do. And reading is by far my favorite. I start getting Kennedy ready at the same time every morning. As you can see, I've already done her hair for the week. I don't play by hair, okay? I'm not gonna be combing hair every day. I used to think that that was the way to do it, but I comb her hair one time, Sunday night, and it usually lasts a whole week. This hairstyle, since they're smaller braids, she's gonna have for a little while longer, okay? I did try to look for some bows, but then I realized, like, she's just gonna destroy these bows anyway, so. I just decided not to do them. And she was mad because she thought that I was gonna take down her brazen bees and turns out she actually really liked them. So I wasn't gonna take it down, I was just taking the rubber bands out and putting something more sturdy. Next, I am going to put her jacket on. She loves the jacket and it's just a little breezy outside so I decided to put it on her. Now y'all know I love perfume. Kennedy loves perfume time too. When she wears shorts or a short sleeve shirt, I'll actually lotion her up really good in the morning. Other than that, I'll just do her face and let her choose the fragrance or I'll choose the fragrance. But as you can see, she uses the kitty kind of fragrances like watermelon. I'm not wearing that. Right, so I gave it to her and I put it Alexa. near my stuff. Stop. So while she's putting on her shoes, I'll go make up my bed and do the finishing touches in my room, use the bathroom, anything like that. I did not know that she was playing around with these shoes while I was in the back. I just left the camera there, but I usually let her do this part by herself. We do this every morning. She'll get up and come Here into the front goes. seat and just pretend like she's gonna fall. And we sing her school song that we made up. Um, it's just something fun to do, just spending that little extra few minutes with her before she gets her day started. Even if it is something like small like this, I would rather her leave from the car excited than like not happy about going to school. So I just try to do little things. The same with my son. I'll do little things for him in the morning. That starts his day off good. They have to bring their sleeping bag to school on Fridays, or they take it home on Fridays and then they bring it back on Monday. So that's what she has in her hand. Have a good day. Say bye bye. Have a great day.
disarmed. Good morning. So it's 8.09 and as you can see, both of the kiddos are dropped off. So now the day is mine. Now I have um, a weigh-in slash meeting to go to this morning. So I haven't eaten anything. It's annoying, right? That's annoying. I want to show you guys this. Now, I told y'all that I was not going to show you guys any supplements or anything like that. I'm not going to tell you what I'm eating and all this kind of good stuff. I told you guys about the water because you should be drinking water, okay? That's It is what it is. I don't want to tell you guys. I'm very leery about telling people about supplements because I don't want you to think this is like some quick fix, right? Because it's not. It's just not going to happen that way. It's not healthy for it to happen that way. I don't know your genetic makeup. I don't know. Like I always say, I don't know what your blood work is looking like. I don't know that. So because I don't know that, I refrain from giving people health advice when I simply don't know because it is very situational. However, I, like I just said, have a weigh in. It's really a measure in. And I know you guys haven't seen all the other videos, but we are going to write that. Um, so from Saturday, Saturday to today, which is Monday, um, I needed to, well, from Saturday, really from Friday to Thursday that's coming, I need to make sure that I'm like two inches in, okay? It's really one and a half. Three would make me really happy. Two would make me feel okay. So with that being said, I have to do some things that are not really my normal, like putting saran wrap around my waist. Y'all know I don't like this little thing right here. However, it temporarily does what I need it to do. Starving yourself is a no bueno. However, it's just what I need to do temporarily. And after, you better believe, baby. Thursday, I'm going, I'm eating. I'm eating. But with all that being said, I want to show you guys some of these supplements now. I'm going to talk about them all individually, and then I also want to give you guys a little story or something like that. So this video is going to be very chill. There's no, I don't have any list of what I need to talk about, anything like that. We're just going to let it flow with my day as my day normally flows. Now, the first thing here, people love stuff like this. As you can see, I've never opened it. Um, I just have it in my cabinet. Y'all know I got a supplement cabinet, and it has so much stuff in it, depending on what I need, okay? It says get your skinny on, and if you go through the ingredients, see, the reason why I haven't opened it, because if you go through the ingredients, this right here, this sienna leaf, baby, will have your stomach going like this. <laughs> will have your stomach going like this, okay? So I am not usually, like, in the mood for that kind of stuff, so I'll stay away from things like this. However, I could use it for what I need, it says reduce bloating, improve digestion, lose weight. It's all water weight because bloating is water weight, you know. But this will work well for what I'm doing right now. It just says 28 days, and I really need I need something quicker, okay? So we're going to put that over there. Y'all know about Smooth Move. Smooth Move, as you can see, it also has that same, that same, um, I think it's a root that's in here, the sienna, and it will have your stomach cramping up. And this is not all that good. None of this stuff is good, let me just be honest with you. But yeah, I have this, as you can see, never been open because once I see Sienna, unless it's a desperate time, I'm not about to make my stomach do all that. This one right here is so old. I believe that I bought this, girl, I don't even know if they sell this anymore. I got this from GNC when I was like, mm, it was like 2015, so this is old. I've been rocking with this for a long time excuse me, for a long time, it is, it's how it looks. It's, it still has enough in there, but this is really good. It does not make your stomach hurt and it works very swiftly. Helps promote regularity, gentle internal cleaning. I love gentle. Helps with occasional constipation. Generally produces a bowel movement within six to 12 hours. So I actually might try this one. So yeah, there's something, here's one. Um, let's talk about, we're going we're gonna to save my favorite for last. Let's talk about this right here. Now, you might have heard of ballerina tea. Um, my Asian Mart did not have ballerina tea. They had this China Slim Tea. Here it is. There's only one bag that's ever been missing. You know why? Because this right here will have you calling on the name of the Lord. I'm literally, it says no caffeine for men and women with natural pineapple. Baby, I didn't taste no pineapple. I wasn't worried about no pineapple. It doesn't say it has sienna in it. I don't know what is in here. I do know that you will, you will ish your life away. 
you will cast your cares on the toilet. I do know that. That I do know. And if you're up for that, like, it works. Don't get it twisted. It works. Stomach flat, flat, flat. But the way I had to cast my cares in that bathroom, I really wasn't feeling that. So I literally, I've had this in my cabinet for about four years. And I have not used it because... How old is Kennedy? Kennedy four? Yeah, about four years. But if you're, like, about to go into, like, a lifestyle change, like, let's say you want to... um you want to do keto for a little while or you want to, you know, just change your diet up a little bit. This would be a really good one. But let me tell you, the cares that you have to cast, okay? It's just, oh, just even looking at the box, really. Like, I literally put the box in the back of the cabinet and say I'll never do this again because it had my stomach tore up. Like, you ever had a stomach ache so bad that you start praying? <laughs> You ever had a stomach ache so bad that you start holding on to the side of the toilet? Got got my hand on the um on the toilet paper, literally just like I'm leaning against the wall, sweating. It's that kind. It's the kind that have you up in the bathroom sweating. And if you like that, I mean, it works. It does work. It works very quickly. I say about a day. It works very quickly. So I might give it a try. I don't know which one I'm gonna give it a try yet. I'm definitely gonna make sure I do it when my husband's home, just in case you know I do. Out. I'm gonna tell y'all a little story. Let me tell you the story now before I show you my favorite one. So, you got <laughs> y'all know, maybe you don't know if you've never had um, children before, but there's like this um, this mixture of I still can't drink that tea to this day. It's a mixture of tea, castor oil, and something else, and it's supposed to like put you into labor. Now, y'all know I had like a hip condition. I was in a lot of pain. Towards the end of the pregnancy, I was really done. I was over crying. I was over sitting in the bed. I was just over the whole thing. So I'm like, you know, let, let me Google and see what I can do to rid myself of this pregnancy. Now, <clears throat> I don't mean rid myself of the pregnancy, like hurt the baby. I mean like push myself into labor. So I asked my doctor, I'm like, hey, are, can you induce me? Like, not even induce me, because I, I, I had a scheduled C-section. I'm like, can you like, you know, just give, give a girl a week. Just let me go a week early. And she's like, no. So I said, you know what? She said, if you go into labor before I go on vacation, then I, you know, of course, we're going we're gonna to move forward. But if not, we're going to have the baby after I come back from vacation. And that, I believe it was like two weeks because of the whole March of Dimes thing and babies being born too early, they changed, they switched up the rules, which I'm glad they did. And you know, it's really me being emotional in the moment and in pain in the moment that I really wanted it to like, like, I just wanted it to go. I just wanted her to come home. But anyway, so I went home, tried to take it for myself, went home and decided I wanted to mix up this Teacher, we was I think we we're in a hotel, so we we hadn't quite moved into our new place yet. So we we're in a hotel, so I went in there. Everybody's sleeping. The kids in one bed, my husband and myself are in the other bed, and they all sleep. And I mixed up this little thing. I mixed it up before they came home. I mixed it up, put all the tea in there, drank it. Girl, I'm like, oh, stomach getting tight, contractions started happening. Long story short, at, by the end of the night, I actually slept on the bathroom floor because I was in so much pain. I, I thought I was about to die. I was li literally giving my dying wishes. That castor oil tore my stomach down so good. Tore my stomach down. My husband was so mad. He was so upset. I'm like, I didn't think he was going to do all that. And I didn't want to wake him up because I didn't want him to know that I had mixed up this little potion. I just thought it was going to send me into labor, which was crazy because... The reason why I have C-sections is because the labor doesn't really go like it usually goes. But, girl, needless to say, I don't mess with castor oil like that. And I really be staying away from stuff that have your stomach churning. So, that brings me to my favorite. This is MAG 07. This is the most gentle cleaner cleanser ever. I've used, this is my second bottle. So, um, after I had Kennedy and I, like, you know, went on this lifestyle and well, not really a lifestyle change just kind of like cleaning my system out just restarting everything um i bought some of this and girl i was feeling good and looking good so i bought another one and i have been taking it i took it last week i took it it works okay you have to take a bunch of capsules so if you're not a person that likes to take capsules that might be a problem but you can't mix it in your water it's not good 
but none of this stuff tastes good. Like, what do you want? A smoothie? This ain't a smoothie, okay? So it looks like I have to take, it says take three capsules. I take four. I took four the other day. Did have a decent bowel movement, but I found when I take five, it really gets it going. Um, so I'm just gonna choose which one of these. I have some fiber in there. I have a lot of stuff that I can choose to make things kind of flow out. And I just need things to flow out because you got a lot of stuff in your gut. You know, it does, it affects your weight on the scale and it does make your waist bigger or small it's not necessarily like you're losing fat so i don't want anybody to think this is losing fat it's not if there's fat to be lost you have to do something else and you probably need a little bit more time to do that but kind of like you know like a boxer's kind of weight cut thing that's what you're doing real like i said you know your health i don't so there's that um so yeah i'm gonna try this this does not cramp your stomach at all it's literally like uh you feel you feel a little like you feel like a, I gotta go to the bathroom. That's it. It doesn't even feel like you know. You know when you have diarrhea, how your stomach like really, really hurts. It doesn't feel like that either. It just feels like I need to go to the bathroom. Now, if you miss the cue to go to the bathroom, you might poo on yourself. So there's that. But this is good. So I know this was very. That was weird to put in this video, but I wanted to say that. So with all this poo poo stuff out of the way, I actually want to have a real conversation with y'all. I got a little while before it's time for me to go. Um, because yesterday I posted, I post a video um, about energy work and all this kind of stuff. And I knew people were gonna be butthurt, but I, I actually, that video is, po like I made the video a while ago. So it wasn't even like yesterday. I didn't make that video yesterday. And I had it on my, um, like my, I have a few videos for you guys that you haven't seen, but they already made. And I had it on there. I'm like, I'm going to just save it. I'll wait because I don't feel like dealing with it. I don't feel like, mm. And then yesterday, it was just like, girl, wait for what? Anybody who, who like, I'm not going to say believe something different because let, let's address, let, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about belief because I don't want anybody to think that I don't want people to believe other things because I don't care. I don't care and you shouldn't care. You shouldn't care what I believe. And I shouldn't care what you believe. That should be how it would go. Um, and some people, I mean, I get how you like, I get how you could think just because I, I am a follower of Jesus that I could be a Christian, but that's religious. That's a religious mindset, right? Because Jesus wasn't even a Christian. Can we, can we? I like the Bible. I read the Bible because I like it. It's a good book. It's a good book. It's like, I like this reference, right? Think about doctors. Doctors go to school, they study a book, okay? You might not believe the book, but that's how they're getting the knowledge to be able to help you. Am I saying I'm trying to help you? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this whole idea of like, I don't believe in that book, that book has that book has been changed so many times. It's, it's really like, it's one of those low level mindsets that I talked about in that video. Think about this book, like I said, the doctors go to school, they they study out of this book. Of course, they do. They have practical things, so they have hands-on, just like us um, massage therapists. We practice, out of, we practice out of a book. We have hands-on experience to teach us more, okay? This book, the books that we learn out of, they change over time. Why do the books change? Well, they change because pe the way that people learn changes and situations change. So when I talk about the Bible, and you're not sitting there arguing with the people in massage school talking about that ain't right. Why are you on here arguing with me? It just doesn't make sense. It's, it's low level and it's so like, whatever. Um, yeah, but anyway, like I was saying, it's just one of those things I get. It's a very sticky subject because we have been conditioned to say, to, you know, oh, I need to pay my tithes and I got to follow the pastor or God is not going to hear from me. And it's like, if that's what you think that I'm doing over here, you definitely need to watch somebody else because that is not it. That's not it at all. But I wanted to 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 like incorporate this this is one of the things that happened to me where i don't believe any it's not that i don't it's i don't categorize people because you really don't know like so many things has happened in my life where i can't even with a good heart like categorize someone into like one specific group the truth is if you believe in god we all believe in, in the same god i know you don't want to hear that and people who believe in jesus believe that that God 
that Jesus is God in the flesh. So Jesus came to earth to help us to better relate to God, help God to better relate to us. Because, you know, it's, it's a different experience when you have someone who is above you and who has never, who you feel has never experienced the things that you have experienced. That's what Jesus came to do. I don't know what all this other stuff is. So when I speak of the Bible, I always say this, I'm speaking of the Bible as a book, a book of wisdom, just like any of those other books back there. There's a book about pole dancing over there. There's a book about workouts and weightlifting. I'm not questioning any of those other books. I'm reading it. Sometimes the knowledge pertains to me. Sometimes it doesn't. And I move on. You know what I mean? But people just be doing the most. So anyway, I want to tell you about this story. So y'all know, I told y'all about my car story. I told y'all about the hybrid, the Honda story, right? Well, after I got the Honda, I actually ended up getting the Honda fixed. Um, I, the, I think it was FEMA. Was, did FEMA end up giving me some money? Either FEMA gave me some money or the VA gave me some money. Somehow I got some extra funds to be able to get my car fixed. And it was like $3,000, $24 to $3,000. I don't remember, somewhere in that ballpark. So I ended up getting the car fixed and I was working at the job that I met my husband at. And I had been there for about a year. And towards the end of the year, I really began to look at my life and, and say to myself, I can't afford to live here. I can't afford to live here. I need to get a car that's cheaper. I can't really afford this car because I can't afford the insurance. Like God really sustained me through that process. But I came to realize that something needed to change because this wasn't sustainable. Even though it worked for me in, you know, while it was working for me. I never got kicked out of my apartment. Nobody ever came pick up my car. You know, I wasn't without anything. However, it helped me to learn a lot. So anyway, I say that all that to say, it was kind of coming down to the wire where I needed to leave the job. And I knew that because I just, I just felt it. I got promptings that I needed to leave the job soon, but it wasn't the time yet. So I remember um, I'm driving from home. I'm driving from work one day and I get a voicemail on my phone. This repo man, he said he was a repo man and he was come. I owe, he didn't say he was a repo man. He said, I owe some large amount on a car and that I was going to get like, I was going to get arrested for Grand Theft Auto or something like that. Honey, I called his behind back. I still remember his name. His name was Paul. I called him back. And I'm like, what is going on? I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like, well, you have a car that you need to that you need to pay for, and or you need to come pick, pick it up, something like this. And I said, oh, well, you know what? Forget all of that. You can come pick up the car. Like I go to work tomorrow at this time. When I come home, come and pick up the car. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. It doesn't even have to be all that. Like, don't do all that. Just come pick up the car. I, I can't afford it. And the, honey, there's a burden. Let me make a quick insert right here. So if you don't know that repo people usually get paid money from the car dealerships to return cars. So they're, I'm not trying to be rude, but they're usually pretty sharky. Okay. So he was very confused as to why I would relinquish this to him and essentially help him get paid but what he didn't know was god had been telling me that i need to let go of this car a long time ago when i was sitting outside that car dealership crying like boohoo crying that they wouldn't fix it and i didn't have the money for it to be fixed i knew that i needed to let it go then but i held on to it i held on to it for a whole year and the year that i held on to it it was good it was good for me but i should have taken that money and gotten a cash card, but because I didn't think that I would get anything in return, because this was the second time now, this was the second car, because I didn't think I'd get anything in return, I was afraid and I held on to that car for dear life and it caused me a lot of financial stress. Let's get back to the video. He said, well, I checked your driver's license and you don't have a record. And I'm like, no, I'm just, I mean, I'm just a girl and I just kind of fell on hard times. I mean, I'm. I'm a single mom. I'm out here working. I'm not. I'm not one of those people who want people to pity me. But I'm out here working, and I just said, I guess I can't afford it. Like I'm. I was young when I bought it, and I. I'm young. I don't know. Like I can't afford it. So, he said, Okay. Well, I'm gonna meet you, and won't come get the car. And I could tell that he was like, Well, this not the person that they. They didn't tell me this not. I'm getting something else. So anyway, I met with the man. 
And this is gonna be crazy because he, I didn't, I, I didn't know him. I know that I had been praying. I had just like, God lead me in the right direction. I know that, I know I can't afford this. I know I need to give up this car. I know this is the right thing to do, but I don't know what's next. Like, if I give up this car, I can't get to work. Y'all know my family situation. I'm, I was getting out of an entangled relationship. I didn't want to have to call and ask this man for them because he wasn't going to give it anyway. And I'm like, what do I do? So the man met with me. He picked up the car and he said, you know what? He said, you know what? I prayed and God told me that I needed to do this for you. This man picked me up. He picked up the car. He picked me up and he drove me to a lot like a, a car dealership. Now it was one of those cheap, janky car dealerships. And I was like, but I don't have any money to put down on the car. And he said, that's okay. We're gonna work something out. It's, it's all gonna work out. That's okay, just relax. And I went in there. Now the man who owned the car dealership was Muslim. And it was around Ramadan. He had just gotten back from you know his home and days of fasting and prayer. As a matter of fact, when we were there, getting um like trying to sign everything and all that kind of stuff he stopped to pray and uh, and another thing that he did when i met with him i reached out my hand to like say hello he would not shake my hand so automatically someone who's extremely religious or something like that a would not have wanted to do business with a muslim b would have been like why he don't want to shake my hand but i you have to understand that we're all different okay and different religions different beliefs and things like that they're very they're different for each territory but they're also different for your your particular circumstance and i don't know how to best describe that but we're all different so i went in there and basically i got a car i got i got a car i didn't have to pay anything down because the people the people now this month this man is a muslim he doesn't know me, but something about my spirit is agreeing with his spirit. And he trusts me that I'm going to walk away from this lot and come back and pay money. This repo man, that is unheard of for the repo man to vouch for somebody who's getting their car repossessed. And he didn't tell the other people that I was getting my car repossessed. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. And that kind of goes to show you that god will work on your behalf and he will use he will use anyone like it doesn't matter he'll use the atheist he'll use anyone and if you're so religious and so like your mind is so in a box that you can't be used and you can't allow other people to use you you can't allow god to use you on someone else's behalf i mean i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to tell you but don't come for me <laughs> don't don't send over here for me another thing i want to tell y'all um Still got some time. I know this is crazy. We ain't gonna be talking this much this whole video. So <clears throat> another thing I wanted to tell y'all, I didn't tell you guys in the mobile massage video because I didn't want y'all to be, you know, feel no type of way about it. Um, because it's easy to do. So yeah, I told you guys about you know having dreams, and and I want to tell this to you that there's different types of dreams, right? Whenever you have a dream that you wake up in the morning and you feel like I need to remember that. Perhaps you should write it down. Perhaps you should remember it. I told you guys about that dump truck story where the boy, he he had, they had done sleep studies on him. They had done, I mean, they'd done all this kind of stuff on him when he was younger. And he would have these very real life dreams so much so that he was sleepwalking. The doctors couldn't figure it out. No one could figure it out. They were doing all kinds of studies on him. Long story short, when he got older, he had a dream. He started, he I think he started drinking or something like that because you know when when there's something wrong with you and no one can quite figure it out it does put you in a space to where you're like i guess something's wrong with me and you don't know what to do you don't know what to do with this uniqueness about yourself that no one else can place into a box perhaps god meant it to where he shouldn't be placed in the box but anyway so he had one dream one night that he was being chased by a garbage truck or a mat truck i don't remember which one it was and he told his mom and you could tell his mom was concerned in the documentary because he had had these dreams all his life and guess what happened he got, that's how he died he got he died he got ran over by a truck that's how he died now says me why are you saying this because i want to share with you guys this dream and i want to show you what what happens when you put your trust in 
in things outside of God. When you try to search for answers outside of God, you don't get the real answers because I could have went to Google to Google this drink. Let me hear it tell you because we I'm taking a while. Um, so I woke up the other day before my appointment, right? Now I had this dream. I was on like this long track. It was bridges. They were twists and turns. And if you don't know me, I don't do all that. I don't like no twists and turns. At one point in time, you know, I just don't like all that. I roller coaster, all that kind of, I don't like that kind of stuff. It, it literally looked like a hot wheel racetrack for me to get to this appointment. But I was zooming. I was like, I don't want to let the client down. So I'm going to focus. I am not going to focus on the fact that this road is long and winding and tall. I'm not going to focus on any of that stuff. I noticed it, but I didn't focus on it. So I went through, went into, I ended up in this mall space and I got lost and I got law. I would have my GPS on, but I was like, you know what? The people here know more than me. So I'm just going to ask them. So I parked my car in this mall. Girl, I spent hours in this mall. Hours. And I got lost. And I'm like, okay. And I finally found my way back out to my car hours later. And I looked at my phone and girl it was a Zeal appointment. Zeal had canceled my appointment and this like, they threw me away from the app. Now this is just a dream, so don't go, don't go attacking Zill. They like they disabled my account, and I said, "Oh man, it took me all this time. I went through all these obstacles and all these hurdles, and they disabled my account." So I woke up and I was like, "Okay, that that was interesting." So I came in the front room and I told my husband. I said, I told him what the dream was, and I told him what the dream, what God told me the dream meant. Now. I can't go to Google and ask Google what a dream means from God because Google don't know my situation. Google doesn't know my heart. Google doesn't know the things that I deal with in my life. So why would I ask Google? Why would I ask someone else to interpret a dream for me when I know it's between me and God, the things that I struggle with? Correct? Correct. So I was talking to my husband and I told him, I said, I told him the dream and I also told him what the dream meant. And I was like, God told me that in this season, he is going to allow me to do things that I would have deemed that I'm afraid to do. So I'm going to be able to go into spaces and places that I would never be able to go in. But there's one caveat. The caveat is I can't ask nobody no questions. I can't tell anyone what it is that I'm doing, where it is that I'm going. I can't ask other people including my husband and my husband echoed this to me including me and i was like yes because people those people who were giving me directions in the dream they didn't know they didn't know god's place for me they didn't know where my assignment was they didn't know all they know was hey let me tell you to go this way go this way but they they i couldn't explain to them the particulars so in that dream god was showing me don't ask people no questions about what i'm doing for you and to you and through you because they're not going to have the answers they're going to confuse you and you're going to be lost and when you get lost that's it that's it you can't afford to get lost no more so don't ask them no questions i'm letting you know this so that was the dream now you guys know later on that day because i posted the video that when i got to the resort the appointment was not at the right time and if i would have been doing some weird stuff like and now when i say weird stuff is really not consulting god and say what did that dream mean i would have automatically been superstitious and said oh my god the dream is coming true that means that means they're going to cancel me like that means that means zeal is not going to allow me to take any more appointments they're going to deactivate my account if i would have if i would have correlated the two of those together right that's what would have what would have happened because i was late to the appointment the appointment was supposed to be at nine I thought it was supposed to be at 9 30. They said 9 o'clock. And instead of just leaving and canceling it all like that, I said, no. I, I stood there and I was like, no, that's this not gonna go like this. And it turned out beautifully. I got, you know, I got a great tip. It was a great appointment. It worked out. But had I did something like search for Google with this dream meant or just make up my own interpretation of what it meant, it would have been bad for me. One, it would have been bad for me because, like I said, I would have messed up the appointment that was to come because I would have been being like all in my head, all anxious and stuff. Secondly, I would not realize that the dream was actually a warning of what was to come. Right. So I would miss out on the information that was given via the warning. 
So I wanted to share those two things with you. Um, the first one was definitely laid on my heart because I don't want anybody believing that I, honey, I love, I love everybody and I'm not God. I always say that. I know people, people don't like that. People who, people who believe that they're Lord over their own life, they don't like when you say you're not God. And I'm not, I'm, that's not me. I'm not going down that road. I've been down there before. That's the only way I can say I'm not going back because I didn't travel there before. What's the song? I didn't travel down the road before and trying to find my way back home. The old me's dead and gone, dead and gone, dead and gone. Yeah, so I'm not going. I, I ain't going back, okay? I'm not going back. I'm not going back to being broke, busted, and disgusted. I'm not going back to being anxious and depressed. I'm not going back to people pleasing. I ain't going back. I'm not going back. I'm just not. I'm not going back. One of my lovely subscribers said so beautifully the other day, like, be bold, move forward in boldness, be courageous. And I feel it. I feel when I cry in this video, I feel that after all that I have been through, after all that I've been through, after all that I've overcome, I finally feel boldness coming back again. And, and I, I have to share because I want you to know that it wasn't always like this. I remember, I think after me and my husband was like going to split up, it was very, it opened my eyes to a lot. And I think even, even more so with that, when my bonus daughter moved with her mom, it broke my heart in a way that I don't ever think I thought my heart could be broken. Yeah, so... It was a long road for me. And some people, I always say this, some people never return to doing the right thing after they got their heart broken. So let's not sit on here and cry. We have a way in to go and do, and then we have, girl, some tea to, some tea to get through. I haven't even started drinking the water today because I need to do this tape and weigh in, whatever. Let me use the bathroom one good time. It's 8.40 and I will see you guys later. You thought it was a rotisserie chicken, didn't you? It's not, it's me. <laughs> it's me wrapped in saran wrap, girl. All right, let me see if I can get a little higher so you can see. Can you see? I got this saran wrap on. I have this little wooden roller just to kind of activate my lymphatic system. And I'll put this thing on before I eat my food. So I just came back from my taping. It's not even away at this point. I weigh exactly the same because that's just how it goes, honey. Like, um, I'm not doing anything necessarily to drop the weight at this point because I dropped the food. So I am a half of an inch away from my mark and I'm like what can I do I need a half an inch on my waist or half an inch um, on my hips and if y'all know anything about hips and thighs they don't move that easily so we ain't even gonna worry about that we're gonna get this half an inch off our waist even if it is superficially so I guess what I'm gonna do today I'm just going to let me tuck this in here I'm going to wrap this up I'm gonna wear this all day I need, I need to get it done by Wednesday. So far it's Wednesday, it, that might change. So I'm gonna wrap this up. I really hope it's Wednesday because I'm done with this, okay? So I'm just gonna wrap this over this and I'm gonna even sleep in it. Like this is gonna be a 24 seven ordeal. Like I said, this is not weight loss. I'm not losing no weight doing this at all. This is, girl, basically sucking in your stomach that's really what it is sucking in your stomach and helping with water weight so i'm doing this i'm about to see pick my pick my potion which one of these teas i'm gonna use and i'm gonna eat me some food i think i'm gonna eat my food first and take the tea tonight so that might be <laughs> the results might be on on this video and i mean the results are gonna be clenching to the toilet this video or the next video so let me prepare my lunch and i'm gonna get right back to y'all